All right, everybody, welcome back. Today we're talking about, uh, with welcome back with vectors. Today we're going to be talking about Pythagorean theorem. Hopefully, definitely something you've already seen before in your geometry class, in your math class. And we're going to be using a lot of this in vectors. So hopefully this is more of a refresher than anything. And if you didn't understand in your math class, hopefully you're understanding it now. So when using the Pythagorean theorem, the triangle needs to be at a right angle. So what does this mean? Okay, so we have a triangle here uh, symbolized with these vector no vectors A, B, and C. And the angle right here uh, should look, we could have like a little square thing here. This angle should be, I guess, perpendicular from each from the vectors. And this is going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so when it's directly to the right and then directly up, this angle is 90 degrees. So we can use this Pythagorean theorem, which we'll talk about, whenever we have a, like a 90 degree triangle here. Okay. Next, the hypotenuse represented in red here is always going to be larger than the legs. Okay, so this, in this case, this vector C here is always going to be bigger than the legs, which is vector A and B. So we should know, and the vector C here, this is called the hypotenuse. That's always going to be bigger than uh, the other side, side A in this situation and side B. Okay. Okay. So if you've done Pythagorean theorem before, you should know this formula. It's called, it's, you know, you formula equation, you hear a squared plus B squared equals C squared. One thing I just want to say right away is sometimes they're not going to be letters A, B, and C. This C represents the hypotenuse. Okay. The hypotenuse. So we're going to, whatever the hypotenuse is, the leg squared, one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared is going to be equal to the hypotenuse squared. I just want you guys to know off the bat, it doesn't really matter what A and B are, but it does matter to know that it's going to be plus the hypotenuse squared. Okay, so how, if we were to just wanting to find the hypotenuse uh, with this equation, what would we have to do? Well, we'd have to get rid of the squared and how we do that is we find the square, we do the square root on both sides. So in this case, we find the square, uh, to find C, we find the square root of A squared, one of the sides squared plus B squared, okay? If we wanted to just find B in this instance, what we would do is B is equal to the hypotenuse squared minus one of the sides squared, and so on. Same thing with A. Uh, the hypotenuse squared minus one of the other, the other side squared. Okay. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't make sense, that's totally fine. As we do the math examples, I think it'll make a lot more sense. So let's try some things out. Okay. If A is equal to 10 meters and B is equal to uh, 8 meters, what does C equal? Okay, let me just write this out. 10 meters, B is 8 meters. And of course, this has an angle of 90 degrees. And anyway, we don't have to put that, but I'm just putting that there with the C equal. So again, we should know that C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. And we should know that when we square root both sides, we get rid of that squared. So it's going to be C is equal to the square root of A, which is, I'm just going to do this, 10 squared plus 8 squared. Okay. And now I'm going to do C is equal to my calculator. What is that? 100 plus 64. So it's going to be 164. So C is equal to the square root of 164, which is 12.81. Okay. So this is going to be 12.81 meters. And uh, I hope that made sense. Uh, we're going to do some more, and it's probably going to get a little more complicated, but hopefully it just makes sense. But we'll see. Let's go. Okay, so see, now we don't have A, B, and C, so this might be a little bit more complicated, but hopefully it's not. Um, so if W equals 12 miles, so it's going to go 12 miles, and then G is equal to 7 miles, what does E equal? So... In this situation, let's think about which one is the hypotenuse. And if you want to know what the hypotenuse is right away, you should know that's going to be the longest vector. So in this case, the longest vector is E. And in this case, that's also what we're looking for. OK. 
okay? So we know the formula, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, but in this case, c is represented by e. So we can say e squared because c is represented by the hypotenuse, and in this case, the hypotenuse is represented by e. And we don't know what a or b is. It's either going to be g or w. It really doesn't make, it really doesn't matter. So I'm just going to do g squared plus w squared, okay? And now I know that e is equal to the square root of g, which is 7 squared, plus w, which is 12 squared, okay? And now let me break this down a little bit more. 7 squared is equal to 49, plus 12 squared is equal to a total of 193. So now we should know that e is equal to square root of 193, and that's 13.89. Um, miles. Okay, hope that made sense. Okay, moving on. Okay, if A equals 8 kilometers and C equals 10 kilometers, what is B? So let's see, A is equal to 8 kilometers, B is equal to, we don't know, and C equals to 10 kilometers. So what we should notice when we're doing this problem is, oh, C, they give us the hypotenuse in this instance, but they don't give us one of the legs. So how do we solve that? So again, let's look at the formula. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. But this time we want to find what B is. So I'm just going to bring this A to the other side. So I'm going to have the formula and we had this before C squared minus a squared is equal to b squared. And we had that before if you wrote it down. Um, whoops, uh, well, how did I have it? Uh, b, we're looking for b, okay. So we have b is equal to c squared minus a squared, okay? All right, let's see how we do this. Again, we're gonna square root both sides. Uh, I'm just gonna put b here is equal to c squared, which is, uh, I guess let me just write it down, 10 squared minus a squared, which is 8 squared. Okay, 100 minus 64, 36. Okay. And then b is equal to 36 squared, which is the square root of 6 kilometers. Okay. Hope that made sense. Moving on. If s is equal to 12 feet, and r is equal to 15 feet, what does r equal? So s is equal to 12 feet, r is equal to 15 feet, what does d equal? Okay, so again, the hypotenuse in this instance is this 15 feet r, okay? So I'm just going to just start kind of writing things out now. So I'm just going to do 15 squared is equal to 12 squared plus d squared. I hope that is okay. I just did the hypotenuse squared is equal to one of the legs squared plus the other leg squared. And this time we're just looking for d. So I'm going to do d is equal to a square root of 15 squared minus 12 squared. I just brought this to the other side, okay? So I hope that's okay. If not, please look at the other video again for it to make sense. And then let's do this. I'm gonna put this inside, 15 squared minus 12 squared, and we should get square root of 81, which means uh, nine times nine is 81. So we should know that this is nine feet, okay? Um, all right, let's look at this. P is equal to 32 meters. C is equal to 27 meters. What does Z equal? Okay, so we're looking for what Z is. P is equal to 32 meters. C is equal to 27. And we're looking for Z. And what's a little bit confusing here is we have C. So you might be thinking, oh, C might be must be the hypotenuse because C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared. But no, remember what the hypotenuse is, is the longest vector. And in this case, the longest vector is P. C and Z are just legs of that uh, hypotenuse vector. Okay. So this should be looking like 
p squared is equal to c squared plus z squared. But we're looking for z, so we should have z is equal to the square root of uh, p squared, which is 32 squared, minus c squared, which is 27 squared. Then let's do this. Okay. Uh, z, 32 squared, minus 27 squared, 295. Square root of 295, 17.18 uh, meters. Okay. All right. Um, all right, let's look at some conceptual examples. So let's look at that. Which side is the longest? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And we should know that the angle that's angled or the side that's angled is going to be the longest, uh, and that is the hypotenuse. So that's going to be P. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking about Sokotoa, which maybe you've done before, but it's going to be an absolute nightmare. If it is, we're going to take it slow, and hopefully it makes a lot more sense. If uh, it was good, then great. Uh, but I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.